This is a Starlink dish. And if you're a digital nomad or a camper like me, this has been a complete game changer for staying connected while you're out in remote areas. But there's a minor issue with the standard kits like the one I have right here. You see, they're designed to plug into a wall outlet and use AC power. This is the AC power brick that comes with every Starlink kit and it takes the AC power from your wall outlet, turns it into DC power so that the router can send it over to the dish for power. For people in vans or RVs that are on battery power, that presents a problem because that requires an inverter to be able to use this plug. But if Starlink uses DC anyway, why not eliminate this altogether and just run Starlink directly off of DC? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna be showing you how to do in this video today. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to take a dish like this, the standard Starlink, and run it directly off of DC power anywhere from 12 to 24 volts. Okay, so why DC in the first place? Why does it really even matter? Or why would you want it? Well, the, the short answer is that it makes this whole system more efficient. It doesn't make your Starlink use less power, it just eliminates some of the inefficiencies. You see, with this right here, this is the AC to DC power converter brick that comes with Starlink. If you're using Starlink with a battery system, that means you're gonna be going from DC source, which is your battery, to an AC inverter to convert that DC to AC, and then this is gonna plug into it. This converts that AC power from your inverter back to DC to power the Starlink. So by using your Starlink directly off of DC, you eliminate this inefficient step right here, and that can save you power. You can reduce the amount of power that your system is using to power Starlink by making it more efficient. And that's what a DC conversion for Starlink does. Another benefit is that it allows you to more easily use a third-party router. With this, you kind of have to use the Starlink router because it's technically the power supply or the PoE injector for the dish. But with this DC conversion that I'm about to show you, it eliminates that step and means you can use any third-party router more easily and eliminate this altogether. So it might sound complicated to convert your Starlink dish to run off a of DC, but it's really not. It's really actually pretty simple. I have everything that I need right here on the table in front of me. So this is the power supply that comes with your Starlink. We can get rid of that. We don't, we don't need that. What we need is this thing right here. This is the Dishy No AC. Maybe Dishy Noac. I, I don't know how they want me to pronounce it, but I'm going to call it Dishy No AC because that makes sense. We're not using AC power anymore. No AC. This is from a company called Star V Mount. And Star V Mount makes a lot of different Starlink accessories. They make mounts, they make power supplies, things like that. And I decided to get this one for my DC conversion because of how integrated and simple everything is. A lot of the other options on the market have a separate PoE injector and a separate power supply, and you have to wire everything up and try to mount everything. And I like simple, so this is what I chose. The Dishy No AC is a DC power supply for Starlink specifically. They're made for the generation three standard and the generation two standard actuated. So this unit is actually compatible with both standard Starlink units. What this does is it takes the voltage from your battery system in your van or your travel trailer or your RV and it steps it up to the required voltage for Starlink units. The input range is nine to 36 volts. That means it's compatible with 12 volt and 24 volt power systems in your van or RV and Basically, there's three connections here on this. You have the power input right here. You have the Starlink dish connection. That's where you'll plug in the Starlink cable to the dish. And then you have your router connection. So you'll be able to use any third-party router, even the Starlink router, which is actually what I'm gonna do. All you need to do is have a cable that plugs into here for the router connection. I'll put a link to the Dishy No AC from Star V Mount in the description below. Also put a coupon code that you can use on the Star V Mount website. That'll give you 10% off, and that is exclusively for Starlink hardware viewers. So make sure you take advantage of that. So besides the Dishy No AC here, the only other things you need are some various cables here to be able to connect your battery and to your router. So I have just a simple uh, Ethernet cable to connect the router to the Dishy No AC. And then I have some, uh, just some basic 12 volt wiring here. I'll put a link to these wires that I got off of Amazon in the description below if you're interested in checking those out. But really you can use basically any wiring that's designed for 12 volt or DC applications. 
So before we get too far into it, let's get a baseline of power usage here. So I've got my little portable power station here. This is hooked up to the uh, router and the standard power supply through the AC cord here. So I'm using the inverter in this power station to power the Starlink dish. And I've got it connected and everything. I, I waited for it to boot up. I've got a YouTube video running here so that I'm on Wi-Fi and I'm using data. Let's just check out our power consumption here. Uh, this little meter right here is reading. Hopefully you can pick that up in the camera, but it's hovering about 60 watts. Jumped up to 65 there, 68, 66. So it's right around that 60, 65 to 70 watt range. So that's a pretty good baseline number. We'll compare using direct DC power using the Dishy No AC next. So now I've got the Dishy No AC hooked up. So now we're running directly off of DC power. And I set it up right here on the table just to show you how it's configured and to be able to test the power output using my power station here. So let me, let me give you a rundown here on the connections. So I've got the 12 volt battery source simulated by this portable power station here. This goes into the input power input of the Dishy No AC. So it's pretty simple, just plus and minus terminals. Just make sure your polarity is correct from your DC power source, whether it's your RV battery or whatever the case may be. This one is just a 12 volt outlet here on this uh, Pecron portable power station. In addition to that, we have the Starlink dish connection. So I'm using the regular Starlink standard uh, cable, and this is going over to my Gen 3 standard dish right there. The other connection we have here is the router. So I'm actually using the Gen 3 router for this DC conversion. And that might confuse a lot of people because you have assume that the Gen 3 router has to be powered by that Gen 3 power supply. Well, that's not the case. So I've got my ethernet cable from the router output port of the Dishy No AC. It's plugged into the very left most dish port on the Gen 3 router. This is important right here. Don't plug it into the two, one of the two ethernet LAN ports. That's not gonna work. Plug it into the leftmost dish port and it'll work as your router in that configuration. Now for power, I've got it uh, plugged in right here, and that's coming off of the same 12 volt source that I'm using for the dish. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. The input on this is 12 to 30 volts. So 12 to 30 volts DC. So again, if you're using this Dishy No AC with a 12 or 24 volt battery system, you'll be able to power the Gen 3 router in the same way. I, I would just run it off of the same fuse as you're gonna run the Dishy No AC. So let's check, check out the power consumption. Okay, hopefully you can see this, but with the Dishy NOAC, I'm hitting 53, 54, 60. Uh, right now it's at 47, so 48, 60. So with the Dishy No AC, I keep calling it NOAC, but with the Dishy No AC, it looks like I'm running anywhere between 55 and 65 watts versus the 65 to 70 of the AC power directly. So you can see there is quite a bit of savings there. All right, so I've been watching it for a little bit just to see, you know, the average, kind of the average power usage from this, running it directly off of DC. So it seems like on AC, the dish uses around, let's just say 70 watts average. And when it's running directly off of DC, it uses around 60 watts average. And while 10 watts may not seem like a whole lot of savings, that's actually around 15% more efficient. Watts mean everything when you're off-grid, when you're completely off-grid, especially if you're relying just on solar. So if you could save five to 10 watts doing a DC conversion, that adds up in the long run. So that's why people do this. It's just much more efficient and much simpler setup, not having to worry about using inverters or anything like that. Okay, so now that I've showed you how I'm gonna be doing this and the power consumption before and after on AC versus DC only, I'm gonna hook it up in my Scamp travel trailer and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is hooking up to my fuse panel. So this is where I'm gonna be powering my, the Dishy No AC from. And I've got three extra fuses on my fuse panel, so I'm just gonna take advantage of one of those open slots. Now this step specifically will vary by, by the type of power system you have. 
So this is kind of just a general instruction, but pretty easy for me. I just had to pop my fuse panel out, hook the positive, positive wire up to the positive bus bar, and then the negative to the negative bus bar. So just two wires here, pretty simple. I'm gonna put a 15 amp fuse for this circuit. That's what's recommended by Starvy Mount. Okay, so I've got everything wired up and luckily this is a very small travel trailer and I'm just gonna be putting the router and the Dishy Noak and the cabinet that's right next to that fuse panel so I didn't have to run my 12 volt wiring very far. So I have the Dishy no a I keep calling it Noak. I don't know why I keep doing that, but the Dishy No AC is going to be uh, secured to this plywood floor of my cabinet right here, and then I'm going to be putting the router on this sidewall, this cabinet, using the Starlink Gen 3 router mount. And I did have to, you can kind of see here, I did have to slightly modify by crudely cutting it out uh, just to be able to fit that DC barrel plug. Okay, progress support time. So I've got the Starlink Gen 3 router mount installed here on the side of my cabinet. And then I've got the uh, router ethernet cable coming from the Dishy No AC router port right here. And then just like the test setup, I've just um, used the same power off the power input for the router. So I've got that run up to my router mount as well. So I'll be able to put the Gen 3 router mount, uh, I'll be able to put the Gen 3 router into the mount right here. It's nice and secure on this wall. I've used a couple of screws here to hold down uh, the Dishy No AC unit. It has a couple of screw holes. So I've just gone right into the, the plywood of my cabinet floor. All right, and my final connection that I need to make to the Dishy No AC is the Starlink cable itself from the dish. And I just run mine through the same the same um, port that my main power cable for my travel trailer comes through so i will push it all the way through and then spool up the 50 foot cable inside there until i need it and from inside you can see i've run it through that same port right there along with my other power cables directly down to where the dishy no ac is and i'm just going to make that final connection here just like that clean up the cables a little bit let me move out of the way so you can get some better light. And this is what the final result of the installation looks like. So as you can see, I've got the Gen 3 router mounted vertically on the cabinet here in the Sterling Gen 3 router mount, which works pretty well. Cables are all hidden behind. And then I've got the Dishy No AC mounted here, our power input, and also the router power supply cable on the same input here. So that's 12 volts. And then the Starlink dish cable, it's kind of tight there, but that'll be fine. And then kind of hidden back here is the router cable that goes up to the Starlink router. Okay, last steps of the install here, got a 15 amp fuse like Dishy No AC recommends. And of course the nice label, just to keep it nice and clean and professional looking. Okay, so I've got my battery on in the travel trailer here. And as you can see, I've got power indicated by this blue LED on the Dishy No AC. Okay, so Starlink is booting up right now. I'm just waiting for it. It says optimizing uh, connection. Hopefully you can see that without too much reflection, but uh, we'll do a speed test here just to make sure that everything is good performance wise. There shouldn't be any impact to the overall performance of your Starlink when you're running on DC versus AC. Shouldn't matter at all, but we'll go ahead and do a quick speed test just to make sure everything is good. Uh, should have a pretty strong Wi-Fi connection because I'm sitting just literally right next to the router. So we'll see how it goes. But while we wait for that, let me just give you kind of my mini review, my impressions of the Dishy No AC. Um, I chose it, like I said in the beginning, because it's super simple. It's just an all-in-one integrated unit that is the power supply and the PoE injector for the dish. It takes your nine to 36 volts input from a battery source, turns it into 56 volts for the Starlink dish, and allows you to use any kind of third-party router 
or even the Starlink router if you really want to. I've been searching for different ways to convert my Gen 3 standard dish to DC. And actually in the Scamp, the, the travel trailer that, that I have, there's no inverter at all. So I need DC power to be able to run the electronics. They have to have a DC power option unless I want to plug in like my portable inverter, which I don't really like to do. So now I can run everything, including the Starlink now, off of DC power directly. So if I'm in those boondocking situations, off-grid situations, I don't have to worry about providing power and having internet connectivity. Star V mounts, dishy, no AC, is super simple to install, super easy to set up. Just plug it in to your power source on your van, your RV, your vehicle, whatever the case may be, and then plug the dish in on one side and plug your router in on the other. Really is that simple. And like I had showed you before during the setup demonstration, I was able to achieve about 15% better efficiency by eliminating the one of the AC to DC conversions from the Starlink Gen 3 power supply. So just using it directly off of DC instead of AC saves me around 10 watts. All right, so let's run a speed test real quick just to make sure that we're good to go. I'm just gonna use the app and run the built-in speed test. And I'm hitting over 300 megabits per second. I hope you can see that. Let me see the final result here is, let's wait for the upload to finish. So we've got 325 megabits per second upload and around 10 megabits per second download. This is on the Rome plan, so deprioritized, but we're still getting incredible speeds out of Starlink. Couldn't ask for better results here, saving about 15% on the power efficiency and still getting over 300 megabits per second down out of my Starlink unit. Now I can take my SCAMP travel trailer, basically anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world really, and park it, find a clear view of the sky, plug my Starlink in, power the Dishy No AC on and have high speed, low latency internet. For my own install, I do still have some housekeeping items to take care of. I do wanna add a switch. So I'm just gonna add a simple DC switch just in line with the power cable that I hooked up to the Dishy No AC. That way I'll be able to just flip Starlink on and off easy as easy as it's just a flip of a switch. So I'd recommend that because you don't want Starlink on all the time using your battery, especially if you're off grid. So with a switch, you'd just be able to flip it on when you need it, turn it off at night when you're not using it. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. I hope that I explained everything well enough. If you have any questions for me about the Dishy No AC or Starlink DC conversion in general, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the support from you guys and we'll see you in the next video.